Welcome, everyone. This is a December 28th Beehive Call and Hackathon. This is an experiment using Discord. Thank you, Antrenig, for suggesting that. And being the end of the year, we are thinking we should all try to wrap up some of our little pet projects. And I know there are a bunch of contributors of every level of experience here. And if anything, hopefully Jan will join us, but I will just jump in saying, uh, Jan B, who's pretty active on the Beehive calls and jail calls and other calls that have been going on since 2018, he is a supporter of process supervision for Beehive, and he has explained at length how that should be done correctly. So he banged out some code for his own purposes, and he threw it over the wall to Antrenig and I, and we have been making sense of that. And someone had asked earlier, what does it look like to contribute? Well, often it's something like that. Someone scratches their own itch and says, hey, this works for me. And then they pull out their like personal IPs and host names and user account names, uh, sanitizing it and hand it off and say, okay, well, if you find it useful, great. And so we have been poking at that. Antrenig, is that vaguely accurate? Sure, I guess. Thank you for that ringing endorsement. Uh, is there anyone here after something specific? Uh, that was the one request I've read so far. And feel free to jump in. Just try to get just feel for when there's a pause mm -hmm. to jump in rather than too much raise your hand. But uh, we'll see how this goes. Aggressive cat Wolfie is typing. And while they're typing, Antonig, have you learned anything about that NMDM missing device on Beehive Startup issue? Yeah. So today we want okay. to focus on these. Uh, consider loading NMDM as you've written here uh, seven days ago. Uh, so uh, this is a very good idea. I have added this already inside lib. Let's see where it is. In it run. Okay, there we go. And in it run, right before running a VM, it will do uh, item potently with the dash N flag, load NMDM as well as VMM. So I'm going to assume that this is done now that it always checks that item potently. You're going through the issue tracker you set up? Yes. Cool. And is anyone not familiar with the beehive hypervisor that we are discussing because i can totally see how we are broadsiding you with a bunch of obscure stuff looking at you shaw and crumb and Aggressively cat wolfie. Oh, here's a hand up. Okay. Uh, so I have been using GitHub. That's not an endorsement. Uh, it's not super active, but you can see a bunch of my work there. My first foray into that was with VMRC back. I don't know, 10 years ago, which was a framework for testing Beehive and gave me arthritis in my left thumb, but it got Beehive out there in FreeBSD 10 rather than, say, 11 or 12. Um, I've been most active with Occam BSD there, which builds a small FreeBSD, and Imagine, which I've thrown into that same repo, which takes FreeBSD VM images that are kind of intended for cloud purposes, but being FreeBSD, they are really good at splatting out to hardware. So I take something like a USB to SATA adapter, throw it on an SSD, and, uh -oh. awesome. excuse me, and push it out to hardware. And the kind people at FreeBSD land fixed a bug in 14 that allows me to uh, do G part backup to backup the partition table from one VM image to another generated by make image and other tools. And I can do mirrored uh, pretend hardware boot images on a virtual machine and then push those out to real hardware, which I find kind of cool.
Welcome, Daniel. Yeah, of everyone over in Be Beehive Call Land, only Rod is like, I don't need a new account, another account. I'm, I'm like, I agree. I, I get it. I get it. Anyhow, uh, does that answer your question? Yes, cool. Uh, show of hands, is anyone beyond Zeontraneg and Daniel and such using Beehive? It is a hypervisor in FreeBSD 10 and onward. <clears throat> Shaw is looking to learn. I'm sure Shaw is concerned about the Beehive acquisition of VMware, obviously, and thinking, hey, <laughs> yes, Andrew. Andrew is using Beehive on Omni OS and was a remarkably early adopter because their previous solution was kind of a workaround, as I recall, using VirtualBox on a limo. So welcome, Andrew. Your work is invaluable because you've probably been one of the earliest Omni OS Beehive production deployments. So hats off to Andrew A. Hedinger, who has a hand up. And if your hand is up to talk, stop. jump in. And Andrew, go ahead and set up. I'd love to hear your story, like using VM Beehive, using something else, rolling your own. Oh, just answering your question. Thank you. Satesh, you are a user. How are you using it? And how are you launching VMs? My use case is generally pretty simple. Um, I, I, I was interested in it and played with it for a bit. Um, for a long time, I was using it straight from like the command line. Um, but eventually I just ended up um, starting to use it with like libvirt and vert manager more for convenience. So using libvirt, how is that treating you? And there's Rodney who's like, screw it, I'm going on Discord, but um, <laughs> through a non-traditional route. <laughs> it, it's, it, it simplifies actual use a little bit. It, it was a little bit extra, in, you know, of a of a learning process to get them to play nice together. But um, I've been happy with it so far recently. Cool. And again, remind me, still launching it from your own scripts or something else? I get distracted here. Yes, my own scripts. I'm looking cool. very forward to having an effective way to. Uh, Do so in a less there. hacked together fashion. Yeah. Uh, have you shared those in any way, shape, or form? Or no, I'm way too embarrassed by them. They are oh. a mess. It's 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 horrible. We talk in shell, we talk in Ruby, we talk in Lua. Your shell. That's it's, cool. it, it's a mess. I think we all have our scripts that we use that are kind of a mess. And then they become industry standards like uh, VM Beehive, despite the fact that. So, if you followed the calls, yeah, process supervision has been lacking, and Beehive is partly to blame. It's like exit codes, it's ACPI calls to some random PID as opposed to a very nice, uh, distinct name have been challenges, and that those challenges have trickled up into all those various management projects. And so that said, the calls generally focus on the plumbing, like vCPU count increases and uh, making sure that tap <laughs> devices are not required for a VM boot for networking because, hey, you might not be using tap networking. Thank you very much. You might use, I don't know, SRIOV or something. Uh, okay, so everyone's got scripts. Serial zero, I have some scripts. I never say about the given system. Reading the chat here. Good luck, Rodney. And those who are using phrases like quite new, I'm curious, what brings you to FreeBSD? Was it something like, I don't know, flat pack or acquisition of mm -hmm. migration of Red Hat from kind of, hey, let's be luminaries to, eh, we're upstream. <laughs> Hey, 
tipping, which is cool. Because problem, I can go on all day, so I want to hear from you, not me. This is your call, not mine. Uh, so I originally um, got to, to using BSD on like on the notions of like security and stuff like that. And I was using like mm -hmm. Linux, but uh, some of it. Um, um, I I believe it was uh, especially about like something I read about like the GR security patches at some point and how it turned from open source to bespoke priced essentially. And I was like, yeah, it's nice taking some um, uh, BSD license code and then making it bespoke priced essentially. So I then checked out OpenBSD first, which uh, surprisingly worked basically out of the box for my old uh, X230 ThinkPad. Yeah. Uh, FreeBSD was a little bit more work to get done, and that's uh, that's more more or less um, on it. Uh, I'm nowhere like near that much uh, of of an expert on it. I'm not really in like low level and kernel level stuff, but uh, just based on what I've read and what I was able to verify or what I or what I was able to. They used to myself that it's probably true that I kind of uh, uh, stuck with it, but it's but I'm mainly using it for or planning to use it with userland. Um, I do love my GUI a bit, so I'm I, I'm planning to have like a little Alpine Linux host system with just the GUI setup and using it as a VM host and then most of my user land would be BSD to use stuff. Do you have a GUI of choice, be it XFCE, be it KDE and friends? Um, not particularly. Uh, WL Roots was one of them that I checked out with BSD because um, like GNOME uh, wasn't working on free BSD for me. Uh, it it's some something with XORG that's not working for me on FreeBSD, uh, but um, like Wayland was working fine, and so I ended up with some WL root system, and I believe it's going it's LabWC that I would um, use. Um, at the end of it, I haven't quite decided yet. This is something that's unstable in like in Alpine Linux. Um, and it's uh, and it offers a lot of customization, and uh, I also just found like teams with, like out of the box so that I, so that I can actually learn it. Uh, I can I can I can see the configuration and okay, this is what you need to write to have something look like this, and that's easier for me to learn that way than than from documentation personally. Yeah, I was also curious how are people learning it fresh? Some of us have used these things for decades and we still learn stuff every day. So I don't even know where I would start if someone said, hey, get this up and running. And we all know about the occasional shortcoming in the official documentation and the semi official, like the wiki, and then countless blog posts. And so what documentation has been the most effective for all of you new users? There's a sixty-four thousand dollar question, or euro, or ruble. Question. <clears throat> What's that, Antronig? Um, these files: user local share UEFI firmware beehive UEFI dot FD. That's the ROM, by the way. Mm, which package does provide that usually? Is it? the edk2 or is it i have oh, no you can idea. do beehive firmware which is a meta package the beehive firmware which is a meta package okay that sounds good yes yep oh so you are working on this great and did you see my rc script in the ticket did i see your rc script in the ticket yes i did cool. uh now i want to great mark of google figure out okay so some things in my mind is I want to leave the RC script for the end of the day today. After we have something working, then we start integrating the RC script. Um, 
then my idea is let's see uh, this blue text which seems to be a you issue more than a me issue but hey ah, yeah well yeah i'm, I'm colorblind so who, who, who am i to judge no. um uh, this restart is is the 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 kicker of the day we need to restarts get getting me i actually hope to deploy the system mm -hmm. later today mm -hmm. so yeah and then yeah. Uh, the frame buffer for and also supporting uh what's it called vnc right this is also something we can work on today what i want to know now is in the initialization process we install run it we set up run as vdr as required and we modify the tty's as far as i can tell you want to share your screen buddy what my screen isn't shared i i don't see it but i know nothing about discord it is shared. Oh, um, how do I find that? Cool. There should probably be a window or a little like square here uh, marked for with it with a little kind of monitor looking icon. Maybe you can click. And the name watch screen, which I didn't interpret as as display. OK, screen. Yep. Um... Yeah, maybe here I should also add something like, actually, we can copy for once. Uh, no, bad copying, bad copying. Install, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Beehive Firmware, right? Is the one that we need to install. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. While he does that, I will gladly answer questions on chat. How about? So we were talking about how to teach somebody from scratch and stuff. Yes, sir. And I've got to I've got to say I I think VM Beehive really is just it's I find it to be an excellent script because it's I mean it's plain SH or or close to it. And it does a lot of stuff on Rails that's fine. And it's also pretty flexible in terms of using Zvols or not, using files or not. Uh, and then the configuration file, it doesn't use the, the new one that uh, the BI produced, but has a pretty simple thisRC compatible config. And you can yeah. hack it to work with fancy, fancy networks, fancy ZFS layouts and stuff like that. So. I don't know. So I, I've I've had some luck using, you know, BI in production with a with a you know small tens of servers fleet, tens of hosts. I mean, hundreds of instances. And uh, I don't know. I think that I think that if we were going to create a training program, I, I think that it probably should revolve around that one because. You know, there, there are kitchen sink tools like CBSD and stuff like that, but VMD Hive, it doesn't require any dependencies except for the firmware. And it, I, I find it, I find it just really, really nice. I, I know you, you've used commercial like, uh, like, like TrueNAS and stuff for Beehive at at first, right? So that's an option also. But not a lot, nice... ironically. With profound oh. irony of doing like a decade plus of true now support and beehive in parallel, they were like two different worlds because one's deep under the hood and one's super high level. So middle ground is not my thing. Yeah, I, I, I guess I like the MBI because it's sort of middle middle road, you know, sure. it's, it's, totally. hack, it's, S, it's SH and hackable. And then it's, it's easy to teach somebody how to do basic maintenance. I, I, I've been getting more and more calls from my staff saying, oh, I fixed this VM. And what did they do? They shut it down. They started it up with the VM command. Uh, so anyway, I, that was just a thought I had about the previous True. Slide. Um, Excuse me. I will say it's not helpful when someone does a bug report that simply shows a three-line mm -hmm. VM Beehive config, and then there's nothing super actionable from an upstream perspective. It's like, um, don't know what to yeah, do with this. The, the deep, yeah, it's it's funny because the defaults, the, the, the default output's pretty thin. It does, 
it does provide the beehive command, but in like six popped up lines. Um, and then the debug, the debug command actually shows you less. So shows you less. But that's, okay. But yeah, yeah, but 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 I do think that that's a super easy PR. Like that's yeah. that's something that uh, that with if there was community influence on on that side. And maybe that's maybe that's the wrong approach. Maybe we should be looking to create something in base, like we were talking about last week, or briefly talking about last week. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I do think that the the rails are nice. I, I think that's a that's yeah that's a problem I haven't thought of before. And I think that 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 sounds like. I, I mean, maybe that's a maybe that that's a minor goal to make sure that. VM beehive that everybody slaps it together and tries to run some VMs with it, that they know how to get the bug reports out. Do you gut feeling if we were to have the process supervision improved and maybe networking improved, is it something that might end up in base or is it philosophically different? So, I think it needs, it probably needs, I think it, well, I don't know. We were talking last week about how maybe if it looks like the jail command, that would be, right. that would be more sensible. And then, and then in fact, if it was more like Illumo zones where a beehive was a jail with, you know, with beehive in it, then, then it would basically be a, a jail command. That sounds like right. a really that sounds like a really nice future. Um, and in that regard, Beehive can kind of be invisible; it just happens to do its right. thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I do, I do like that as an ultimate solution. But I do have to wonder with the Beehive being so easy and having, uh, you know, network setup built into it, which which I don't use, by the way. I don't, I don't use many of its features, but, um, but it does get somebody from zero to a running downloaded Debian image. And, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know if this, this doc exists, but I think that doc could be followed by somebody with light Unix experience and, you know, a half hour with an hour with some mistakes, you know, yeah. and then it's not it's not the kind of frustration that often sets in when you're trying to do something unixy um like, like i think i think would happen with trying to run beehive from the shared scripts from the user local share scripts i think oh, that's yeah. tedious enough that it's going to break it's it's, it's not going to be so welcoming which is what i'm into Cool. A very contextual quick interruption. Wolf Quinn has a question about a text. Ah, so I can answer that if Anjanig, you're packing away. That's redirecting standard output to DevNull so that the user doesn't see it. I strongly suggest people run tests all the time, which is simply test for a file, test for a condition. And I even gave a little plug talk about that. And so what it's doing is just not distracting the user with it. If you're referring um, to arrow dev null to angle. As a point of order, it's redirecting both standard out and standard error because of the two point and one. You are correct with that. Thank you for correcting me. So if it All breaks or succeeds, work. nobody knows. But you can take a return value on that, which is yeah, one of I'm, I'm, the I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was not helpful for me as a new user forever to just know that there are these completely invisible tr return values everywhere all the time because they're invisible. So if you were to do echo dollar sign question mark after that, you'll you'll see like zero for success or one or higher for fail. And I now use and abuse the heck out of that in my programming, but Wow, that was one of those hurdles that just sucked. It is kind of one of those things that once you know it's there, you end up using it a lot in scripts. Yeah, and then yeah, you look I at always... the RC scripts of the OS, and 
there are just assumptions that aren't that are assumptions made with no tests. That's like, please fix that. I beg of you. <laughs> Anyway. So I threw in a uh, simple test dash F dash F is looking for files that I believe are readable. And then the double bars is like, if it fails that test say, oh no missing. And I will show something I do all the freaking time dash D. My computer doesn't like running all these things at once. Just saying. <clears throat> so if you look at any of my little scripty thingies, uh, you will see that syntax all the time. I'm put the Zoom call here, which is checking a condition. And uh, not super obvious is that there's like test command like probably test one and just type man test but the left bracket is also test and so whoa. and so what i do is test it give an error message and exit out just so that the user is tortured i might have a, a colon there now a semicolon my apologies let me fix that um and i love that con compact format because yeah And to Serial Zero's question, GPU pass through. So yes, there has been like a raw PC PCI device for compute for a very long time, but Corvin Cohn has been working on GPU pass through because they pass an Intel GPU through to a Windows VM and make it look like the user is on the desktop. So he has a few talks from like BSD Cam and friends about that. And yes, Shaw, the, the left bracket requires closure with the right bracket, and it happens to be nicknamed test. Wolf Quinn's looking at a case statement. Is that a question of what's going on there? The above. And Antonega, are you following along with that? Do you want to answer him? Uh, sorry, I did not listen to the question. Go again. It's in chat from Wolf Quinn. Okay, and the question is? Go ahead verbally, I'll mute. Because I can come here, but then it will be a Matryoshka after Matryoshka. It is revelation how spaghetti my shell codes have been so far. Well, up a few lines before that. <laughs> the one Whoa, with the code block. Play just nested. Holy crap. Oh, screenshot. Awesome. Help usage help setup super v. Um, okay. Referring to the above law, this is why you. I, I meant this. like the um, the way you're writing the like the functions and then actually passing them in the case. Oh I yeah. The... You mean right in uh, here? No, sorry, in command management. So these are the available functions, help init version create, status list start, enable console log stop disable. And if, yeah. if the function is available, we can use command find to actually find if it's available. This is just a problem. If it is, you, I mean, it, it's already defined. The user has typed in help. So you can just do like help init. 
by using by doing by just calling help column column in it. Thank you, FreeBSD, because FreeBSD is the only one that allows column column, uh, which will go to the init column init function, which is uh, ideally in here, right? So this will be init init, uh, ironically, right? So it will be init init, and then you can continue from there. So and then you can have say help init or start init, start stop init, etc. Uh, the one that you have here is, yeah, you, you're just calling the same thing all over again. Yes, that is true. Uh, yeah, good point, actually. I have not seen many people who do it this way, to be honest, at least in the FreeBSD utilities. Although RC does this a lot internally. Mm. I'm sure if Jan was here, he would have corrected me and said, that is not true. We do it in these locations as well. But you know, for now, Yon is not here, so I'll do the Yon impression. And here I have a bug. One is this way, and then this is supposed to be that way. I guess this is the only correct way to do it then. Uh, for now, yeah. Probably, or rather, let's do it this way. Lib in it. Okay. And then this one will be just in it. And then in here, anywhere that I call in it should be fixed to be in a better way. So this will be the in it in it calls in the end something like run as in here. And then this one can be copied not from there, but rather. In it, dear. Run as in dear. Okay, this should make it a lot better, a lot cleaner at least. Let's do it again. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. This is all cute and nice. Um. Okay. And make install cd, and we can do again super v in it without anything else and this should also copy the file properly yes it's done etc tty is already done tty is dot backup okay so uh, yeah i guess we're good then we have the tty is it's correct all is good now let's do let's remove no 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 never remove that file i'm sorry i'm dumb just delete this okay Let's do it again. Yes. Okay, we're good. As far as I can tell, we're good. I would also like to add a space here after modifying just to make it cleaner. Um, modi, modifying, add another space there just in case. Okay, maybe it's nicer this way. How many spaces do I need to add? One. Oh, I need to add one more space. One, two. Yeah, there you go. It's correct. Why are you not doing that properly, my friend? Go. Oh, because this is the non-code version. That's why. Okay. And that. Yes. Okay. This is a lot nicer. Which means I need to also change things in here because we are either... Whereas, ah, uh, yeah, these things need to be changed now. Oh, they're just the, these two? That, that's it? Oh, well, that, that makes my life easier. This changes into um, init dir. Delete this one as well. We have the run script and the finish script. That's it. Okay. Uh, Okay, any questions so far? I mean, for those who are, you know, watching the code being changed or anything. Uh, Michael, as far as I can tell, we're good to go in the sense that I can now do a run with a new code base. Hopefully, git commit. So you pushed everything from the unified massive Single version script. of init. Mm -hmm. Little pieces, okay. Yes, cool. and it works. Now let's see if create works. That that's going to be the actual question. No, okay. yeah, here. Let's see if let's see if um, create works. So let's do super. Also, I do need to reboot the machine because we did just add. Run it 
into the TTYs. So we do need to reboot the machine. As far as I can tell, it is not running, right? Yes, I do XD. Where are our TTYs? Yeah, it's not running. So I do need to also uh, make sure that it's running and its process name is going to be, I have no idea what it is. We just need to reboot the machine anyway. Uh, D message dash A, okay. Uh, exit uptime, not bad. For a country that usually has problems with electricity, shut down, reboot now. Mm. Let's do P dash A. Okay, maybe I can stop sharing my screen until it comes. Okay, now anyway, it will be come back. The problem is that whenever I want to read your stuff in here, it gets to a Matryoshka scenario. But it's okay. I'm just gonna do it this way. And then... um, you can you can click your screen in Discord, and it will um like if you open Discord and click your screen once or twice, depending. Uh -huh. Um, it'll make it much smaller, so at least the Matryoshkas are bearable oh. it makes it so that it's an everyone view so if you oh yeah thank you, you yeah then you can and then you can even like like now it's 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 pretty bearable you can see everyone yes. else but okay. you, the way you had it laid out before was pretty good you can also slide over the um window like there's a draggable like on the collaborations the pop out that's on the side um see that how there's like a dark bar between the people typing and that you yeah. can make it bigger if you want or smaller uh yeah, like there you can drag. See that? See that? You can make it larger or smaller okay. depending on what you need. Just, just trying to make sure you got it. Sorry. Okay. And my terminal keeps saying boom, 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 which means the server is back. Okay. And now I can <laughs> now I can maximize this. That's just for the recording. You guys can do whatever you want on your side. Is it recording properly? Yes, it is. Okay, we're good. Okay, so let's do that. Let's connect. No, nope, not ping. Just SSH. Connection refused. Oh, that's not good. That's never good. It would be very funny if I cannot connect to the machine. Wait, it's pinging, but I cannot SSH? What did I do? Not yet fully booted. Could be. That's, that's always a possibility. No. Ah, yes, you were right. Not fully booted. Indeed. Okay. Mm. Up time, two minutes. D message dash A. That's the D message. That looks good. PS AUXD. Let's have a look at the process trees. And yeah, now we can see it in here. Oops, sorry, my bad. Now we have uh, run it running. Now we have run it running in uh, var run run as VDR. It's logging its stuff into var log run as VDR, and it is monitoring the var service. So now we have var service where you can where we can put any kind of services that we want. Uh, okay, so let's see how we can continue from here. Let's do super v help create. Okay, I need to create a VM. I'm gonna do um, create dash c2 dash m see i i changed some things i'm not now i'm now i'm not sure if is this in gigabytes or megabytes so john ah. asked me to change a lot of things the other day when we stayed till 6 a.m so yeah uh but we can you know read the source code it'd be a real short trip on two megs but <laughs> okay to uh, quote on solo yes Work, Let's see, so there is no G's in the end, and Beehive uses M, right, by default. Okay, so let's say a gig like this. We so want to create a new disk. Let's call the new disk say 10 gigs that looks good with a bridge of bridge zero here's the thing though we don't do bridge management for you 
So you better have the bridge zero ready. Okay, good. So I think this is it to start with. I, c I can give it a VM name, or if I don't, it should use, it should just generate a name if I am not wrong, but let me try to be sure in here. Um, did we bring that back? Yes, we did. Okay, well, that's good. Okay, so I'm not going to give a good name and let's see what happens. That's it? You're done? Really? Creating and then it stops after creating here. Did I miss something? Oh, okay, so it only did this one. LSLTR. There we go. Here's the. Okay, so okay, I need to add some things into the pipeline there. Okay, so let's do that. Um, we create the service there. Then we create a new disk if there is a requirement for that. Create new disk. Okay, then we can do the networking if there is a requirement for that. Networking. Okay. Then we can set up the run script. I think I can do something like this and then, yes, thank you, Ren, for being a very good editor. I don't want to start editor wars. We already have OS wars. So, run a script, create, finish a script. We also need to generate the beehive conf, create beehive conf. And then we need to create, add a down a script, okay. And then create add service, okay. So I'm good with this. None of them are supposed to print any outputs, which means I should be able to do something like this. Okay, that works. Did that even work? Is my Ving that good? No, it's not. Let's do something interesting here. Probably won't work, but let's try. Ah. Okay. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. Creating whatever it is going to create. Okay. And if all of these work, it's going to do done, hopefully. 
otherwise it's gonna be a fail hopefully this all of this is gonna work fine like we can do some coloring if we want let's say this is gonna be green and uh well this one can be in red okay great okay uh fingers crossed no idea if it's even gonna work I want to go to MMT, Zwart, not free BSD, Super V. Uh, <clears throat> hit status. Hit this. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. Let's do make install. Let's do the exact same command as before and um, <clears throat> hopefully it works. Uh, Fingers crossed. I mean, technically, we don't even need a bridge, so I'm just going to remove that. It's no longer dependency, but I'm fine. Mm, <laughs> uh, oh, syntax error. Well, that's good. Line 96. What did I mean? Oh, of course. Say hi. Say hi. Of course. Say hi, dude. Hello, cat. And do tell them about uh, sh-n. It's your friend. What do you want, little dude? What do you want? Tell me. That was fast. Wow. Okay. Everything is in here. PCI. Disk zero. Yep. PCI. That's correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. PSAUX grab beehive. There is no beehive process at the moment, but maybe there will be. Tail dash F log beehive. Nothing in there. What about run as VDR current? Oh, there we go. File does not exist in log run. Oh, that's a new one for me. Where is Jan when you need one? Okay, so um, log run. Do we need a log run? Jan told me that we don't. And do you have it starting by default? Do I have it starting by default? If you create it and it instantly starts, whether you like it or not? At the, uh, so no, it doesn't. It doesn't, no. But oh, the, what I, it, I it. Yeah, but what it's trying to start right now is the log process. So the supervisor is trying to start and it's not. I it see. says that, mm. okay, so var service, mm. there we go, log. You want to run a script in here. I don't know why you want that. Maybe I should connect to Michael's home and check what we had there. Mm. Mm. No, I lied. We don't have that anymore. We should find whatever Jan gave us a while ago. Yeah. Too much. You. Nope. Am I properly using Discord? I never know. Hey, cats are always an appropriate use for Discord. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Say hi, Willie. The neighbors are touring the world and they're like, you know, this old cat is high maintenance. And so, yeah, the other Discords were probably cat. getting. Go ahead. Oh, the other discords were probably getting a little bit nervous. Oh, oh, FreeBSD is a little too serious right now. Thank you. I appreciate it. We wouldn't want them coming down on us for too little cats ah. for. <laughs> Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Willie's old. Willie's flawless. Willie gets seizures, but Willie's a sweetie and a gentleman. Ain't that right? Choo -choo 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 -choo. Oh, keepy keepy. <laughs> Got you. Ciao. And Willie's hypoallergenic, which is good for my daughter, my father, one of two daughters, and yeah, no figure. Oh, you're still here, Andrew. Hello. Let me out. Ah, here are the scripts that are missing. I forgot to add the uh -huh. scripts. I forgot to add the scripts when I devised the file. You can call me dumb. It's okay. It's okay. What is true is true. We'll but, never know, buddy. We'll so, never know. So there is a config for the log. There is a run a script for the log. 
and yeah that's it just these two that that's it yeah okay well that's good to know which means now we can do let's see let's do uh, rm var service var service is a directory i know i want to unlink it how do we remove a link on link am i dumb is that how we do it i feel like that i feel like i feel that that's how we do it which must not be a directory maybe supplied how do you remove a link uh i have no idea i don't think i've ever needed to know that um oh no i'm doing it wrong apologies i'm i'm dumb i need to remove this file there you go okay now it's correct You're not dumb. Uh -huh. okay no more errors here of course because it stopped great let's fix the bug uh in core we will also need a couple of other more functions as far as i can tell um after doing all of this we will need and let's let's also delete that temporary c8 bye bye uh we also need to do create let's say um, add log run as well as create add log config is also a thing apparently i do also wonder if i need to chmod it or not i assume i need I assume I do. I'm just gonna assume that I do. Yeah, sure, why not? Maybe. Oh, you know what? We'll figure it out when it's done. Um what do I need to do here then? In log add log run is gonna be this file. Where are you log run? Well this is log config, that's the easiest part. This is log config. It's always the same. That's what's amazing for me. Okay, log config is going to be... So, Michael, here's a question for you. Um, until now, uh, Jan has convinced me to never actually generate a run script, but instead symlink it to uh, SuperV, which means that if, if SuperV gets an update and the user updates SuperV, all of the run scripts are gonna automatically get updated, right? So like you never need to like migrate a script to a new version. And I'm thinking of doing the same with Jailer at this point, you know, where like people like everything in Jailer is always the same, 99% of it, except the name and a path, right? So like I can do like jail that has a path, has a like the path is different, sure. And then like it just includes user local jailer you know default.com right so um, i'm thinking should we keep doing it is is there a reason to not want like to to want to have different internals i have no idea but i've been still doing it this way I'll, i will continue and see but hopefully this... so yeah about that um mm -hmm. updates are terrifying insofar as say corvin fixed some uefi stuff and then broke all linux vms in the process so mm -hmm. If the user magically gets an update and doesn't quite realize it and then stuff st stops working, in principle, yes, of course, you'd love everything to be updated magically at once. But then when something's really working and then not working, well, not so much. And if you think that's a real Rembrandt and a headless bunny, it's not. Yeah, so any questions, everybody beyond that daniel have you had well. a what scenario you like on? that in production like instead of having you know like the boot script for example copied every time you would have sim linked every time so now you would change only a single file and now it's you know magically modified everywhere. that's kind of worrying me because i imagine a lot of okay i don't imagine a lot of locations where people would want to have a different boot a script in this case right but um, um i don't know uh i don't even know why jailer hasn't done that before you know in in jailer we also don't do that we always copy and now it's a bit problematic maybe maybe we should never copy maybe we should always symlink copy being optional the cat gave dr evil yeah <laughs> i guess i've only 
Yeah, I've only done, I've only, I've only told around with that sort of thing in a in a jail, not with the not with base. But I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work. You don't see why it wouldn't work. So you, so you, you also agree that sim linking in this case is a good idea. So we don't create a new service for every uh, beehive. Instead, all of the beehives are sim linked to a single service. Yeah. Okay. VMs, yeah, there is only yeah. one beehive. The, <laughs> VMs, there's a single. Okay, that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. So in this case, it's also. Look at you, Alan Jude. It's like directories, there is only a single, you know, run a script. Okay. 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 Ah, professional. Yeah, okay, very kind. Uh... Okay. Um, okay. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna turn all, out, turn off my camera because I will be smoking and I do not endorse smoking. So, uh, let's see. What do I do here? I do something like this for the recording. Show them how a git commit works once you have that working. <laughs> I mean, we've committed already three times today. So oh, good. That's like a record, man. Thank Nicely you done. for someone who barely commits. That's yeah, and pushes. You know, so <laughs> and pushes. Yes. So yeah, I asked him for a readme for like three weeks. I'm like, mm -hmm. guys, I just want to try it. Yeah. In this case, the config as well as the uh, run script can be linked. Okay, th that's good for me. So let me see what I need to do in here in that case. So um, I had an example in here. Yep, something like this is what I need. Uh, Jan told me for the creation. I only need the law. Okay, that's good to know as well. Now all I need to do is a similar command, yield. Let's paste both of them here. Paste it, paste it. But now the files are different. It's not the run, it's the log run. Is the log run. And here it is the log config that goes into log run as well as log config. So here we need to add these files ma init log run as well as log config. Okay. So this is the log config file. Let's copy that, I guess. Still here, copy log config open that in a new buffer paste i have no idea what this config is by the way this is just whatever it came to me man and then we should do the log run script as well whose original implementation was in here somewhere yep there we go okay thank you Jan, for all of your work there we go okay let's delete that Set the SSH. Okay, this is also good. Okay, okay. So let's close. Come back to core. Are there any questions for me? I'm sorry. I'm not looking in the chat because I don't. Maybe I can do it this way. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Yes. What happens if I have an old installation when it was like a make file and such? Can I kind of sort of upgrade it to this, or, or do I have to nuke everything? What, what what wait you mean installation of uh, a beehive vm or super v no like super v like i jump on 10.20 on my network and see that the make file has changed somehow and do stuff you mean in your specific case or in the future uh both in your specific case i don't know because like it's not released officially so let's let's have a look yeah, at well, okay. in the future i assume that pkg upgrade will upgrade the run scripts and the config scripts which are all sim linked to some location which we, which are sim linked to at some location and every and everything will continue to work fine that's my assumption there so um uh but i've never done that before like like uh a run script is getting modified at the time where the VM 
is running when there is a beehive process running so maybe Jan can educate us more on that because I I'm I'm out of knowledge for that um sure. that's yeah cool. that's, cool. that's that's one idea also oh, sibling can glow in theory stay even if the file is overwritten um what I got confused there okay So um, we have two new functions here. Let's divide them. Let's add those in our creation pipeline. Maybe later when we have like a dash verbus mode, we can show exactly which step is happening, etc., and stuff like that. So, but for now, sorry, no time for that. We have add. Oh, what did I do? I have no idea what did I just do. Here, okay. We do add uh, log uh, run, then we do add uh, log uh, config, okay. That looks good to me. And uh, now we have the log stuff as well. Technically, I would not need to chmod, as far as I can tell. Let's save everything. And then, uh, are those scripts going to be installed automatically to the system? Let's have a look at the make file. So, everything in init will go. Yep, yep, those are fine. Nothing is hard-coded there. That's good. Um, let's see our changes. Okay. We could add commit actually call the pipeline. Pushing as well. Yeah. And by the way, it turns out my home server is faster than GitHub. Did you know that? Shocker. Shocker, right? So apparently if you um, if you push on GitHub, it doesn't mean that you can pull immediately it might take like up to a minute for the commit to run and if many people are working at the same time and committing like multiple times a day the cdn might lag behind basically okay and this is what it looks like on the host system so find in user local lib uh super v Okay, I think it looks good. Let's just confirm that it looks good. Okay, 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 I'm happy with it. Let's try running it actually. Super V, same command, no changes, please work. It says done, okay. Let's do a tail on the logs. Starting, there you go. It started a new log, as you can see. Okay. Uh huh. Let's do a tail of var log beehive root. Oh my god, this is so long. Okay, should have been better. I'm so sorry. That's my bad. Parent. Okay. Nothing in here for some reason. And what do we have in config? It's just a config file. That's correct. What about the log file? It's just a log file. Okay, that's correct. Let's see at our processes. Do we have something? I don't know. I also have no idea how to check. So it just says this. But there is no beehive process so uh, something in the linking went wrong okay okay log run 
exists. Oh, maybe I forgot to chmod the uh, runner script. Is that a possibility? I don't know. Um, ls l on the original script, I assume. Okay, it is chmodded. It is chmodded. It's an, it's an executable. So it should run. KO log run. No, log supervise. Well, that's for the supervision only. Maybe it takes a couple of seconds. Oh, we have a down script. That's why. It's v status var service. Oh, it's just not up yet. Okay, now we can actually make it up. SV up var service, whatever this is, go. Status, it's still up, but it wants up, but it's not up, which means something is failing, which means now we can actually have it the logs. Current. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, there's a naming issue. Uh-huh, it's just a naming issue. Okay, we can fix this. SV down var service, whatever this is. SV status. Okay. So, uh, something is wrong with the naming process, which is why the name of it is being the full path of it. That's bad. I need to figure out why that's being problematic. That's my bad. Okay. What did we do wrong? Let's see. Um, let's go to var service. Nor. Let's have a look at the name. We should do something like this, I guess, instead. Now, do I need to specify? Why is it stuck like that? I have no idea. Let's do config. Oh, of course, I need to come into here first. Okay. Now, grep into config. Um, beehive. Okay, there's nothing in there. Run. Also, nothing in there. Run prepare. Nick is empty. Okay. Cat. Okay, let's have a look at the run script. Maybe it's an issue with the naming. I'm not sure. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. The name is not correct. That's the problem. Okay. So let's do. No idea what to do there. Um, the naming here is with the beehive string, so that's fine. Maybe the actual path is a problem. Yeah, that could be an issue. Um, one of the variables is not happy. If anyone can help me, now would be a good time. Okay. VM name. Where are we calling VM name? Okay. 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 Maybe the run script is not happy about this. I'm assuming that I'm assuming that's the problem. Yeah. Let's do something like. Is this an NMVM issue? KLD stat might be. Oh, Michael, I think I found a bug in, yeah. in KLD load. Oh? Yeah. Okay, have a look at this. So I'm doing yeah. KLD load dash N NMDM VMM, okay? Yes. So, let NMDM. Oh, no, 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 Does never mind. Support list of items? So N M N M D M okay. NMDM is loaded. NMDM is loaded. Why can't I see it? Oh, it's in, yeah, it's at the top. No, never mind. NMDM is loaded. <coughs> NMDM is not the issue itself. So the pro, okay, so no, this is a naming issue. Never mind. This is a naming issue. Uh, why? Why am I getting a naming issue? I have no idea. Um, so he here's the funny part. It's trying to, let's do set mouse on. I'm getting 
so is trying to create dev and MDM slash root slash the VM name dash com one a which obviously it can't like it's trying to create a directory inside the slash dev okay so, so this putting root in the path yeah it's putting it's putting the path of the vm inside the name which it should not do that according to what Jan ah. told me which means and it wasn't doing that before where's the end you have the code for the mdm creation so i have the code for the name creation which is something in here is is this this is who's supposed to do that maybe yeah. the, maybe i remove the beehive part from here that might be a good idea and just actually take the last part instead of the beehive part like i do it this way and it should work I'm, i might be wrong but let me try luckily we have a way to try so i go to the code make install don't know how to install with 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 a two l's because i don't know english let's do super recreate again it says it's done now we do sv up on this lovely VM. No idea which one it's supposed to be, the B1, D1, apparently. Up, SV is status. On, let's do all of them, okay. And, um, okay. It says, it says it's running. PS, let's do pgrep-lf, or is it LV, no idea. Uh, Beehive. We have a beehive process. We have a beehive process. We have a beehive uh, process. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. Let's let's try doing something like <laughs> this. So let's do um, ko dash f var log beehive. I don't like that it keeps using the full path. I just need to figure out a way to fix that. Parent. Okay. There's nothing in here, but the beehive process is running. So, okay. So it means I should be able to do CU into dev nmdm com one b. I guess was was the user is supposed to use. There you go. We have a UEFI shell. Exit and it's empty. Yep, okay. We have something. We have something. Okay. 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 <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with this thing. We even support French. I had no idea. I mean, nothing else has changed. It just says French. What about standard French? Nope, just some part of it is changed not all of it maybe i should add armenian in here and i'll be the only user for that okay well we do have a beehive shell a uefi shell inside beehive which makes me very happy i'm gonna do uh tilde tilde dot then i'm gonna do sv down var service beehive b1 whatever that is okay okay SV status now they are both down and but their monitoring uh thing is is running okay so we're good did I disconnect by accident because I hear no one nope everyone's still here okay um uh yeah this does make me happy that we have this now working um Maybe I should also try to get. So why am I having this naming issue? It it's a problem with this. It's it is a problem with this. Okay, we did it in here. I need to do the same with the log. Of course, of course. The same goes into here. Ah, now we would go. Okay, now is definitely fixed. Okay, this makes me happy. Uh huh. Uh, let's just change this into beehive name log. Okay, I'm quiet because I'm on my phone. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, you can make noises. It's okay. Let's see if we have any other hash hashes around here. No, 
That's it. Okay. What about log config? Nothing in there. Finish a script is aha. Uh -huh. We also need to fix the finish a script, of course. Of course. Let's just fix some naming in here. There you go. Just auto naming conventions. That should be better. Maybe we do, let's see, we do that way. Okay. Another beehive in here as well. Oh, that was a very bad change. I'm showing you what did you do there? I should do it like this. That way. Okay. One more in here. More in here. That makes it. Okay. Quiet as Rod walk then. Say hello to Uncle Rod. Also known as one of the co-founders of FreeBSD. I can't believe I just said Uncle Rod. Jesus. Okay. So um, let's see what else we have in here. Okay. I think we're good. Now that the naming issue is also solved, we can try running this again. Let's do a reset. Let's do a remove of these sim links. Uh, both of them actually can be gone. Let's clean up the files in here as well. So RMRF4AD as well as B1. Okay, that's good. Let's go to our code. Thank you, NFS. So thank you, NFS. Make install. Good. Super V create. Okay. Let's actually give it a name. Let's call it Rod. Okay done let's don't not give it a name it should be auto generated also done sv status both are down that is correct and now i'm going to do sv up for both of them sv status both are up great which means ls dash l we should have a uh, dev vmm for both of them even the old one is still there. I did not clean that one. That's very bad of me. I should figure out how to clean that one as well. Okay, that's good. Then we should we can also do uh, dev nmdm. We have both of all of the devices. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, and if we go to var log beehive, now we have rod as well as the new machine, which is c25. Sorry. 625 625 okay and if we can do tail on current there are no logs for some reason i have no idea why maybe i'm not doing the logs properly i am not sure about it but if i go to vol log run as video uh we do have logs yes we do okay that's good that is good uh, orgs looks like um, Daniel maybe this would be ha uh, helpful for you because you know like these are the things that are missing from um, what's his name uh, VMB hive right like to show you exactly what the arguments are etc etc so the way that we I do it here is let's say the VM called rod inside of it there is a directory called PCI where you can put all of the PCI devices that you need yeah nice a eh? So, yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, maybe we can destroy these. So now let's hack more. Uh, let's do uh, let's do status. We don't have a status. Do I want to do a status in core or outside of core? Let's keep it inside core, maybe. Actually, core is already very big. Let's keep core only for creation. So it means I can change core and rename it create mm. Am I doing it wrong? I'm I, as far as I know. There we go. Core is now called create. Let's open the new buffer. And in the base, we should nope, not the base. In the actual script, we should load. Load not core but create just like that we also need status as well as we need list which are files that do not exist we need um super v list 
and we need super V status. Okay. Okay. Now I'm happy. So, okay, that's done. That's done. Now in list, let's do message last list. And if it's a function, which should do something. Now we need, um, for now, let's do something stupid. That's fine. Let's do ls var service. Um, arg. No, not arg, just said. Uh, substitute beehive dash with nothing. Okay, we've got something there just for now. Okay, actually, I want to do it this way. Less war service beehive. Okay, uh oh, nope, bad boy, bad boy. That was wrong. There you go. Not a good solution, if you ask me. You know what? I'm just going to do it. Um, even uglier. There you go. Okay. Just for now. Um, yeah. Do that for me. Thank you. And this is for list. And then we have a status. And for status, where are you? Status. S. S. Didn't I create a file named status? Super V status. Super V. There we go. And for status, I want to do. Message, I want to do status in it. I want to do SV, um, var service beehive dash. Okay, I think this should work. I might be wrong, but I think this should work. SV var service beehive. What? It's wrong? Come on. Oh, sorry. Status. Okay, that's good. That is good. Okay. So let's go back to Ontronix code. That's var um, amenities of Artmos free BSD super V make install super V list super V status. And I did it wrong. Of course I did it wrong. Of course I did it wrong. Status. There we go. Okay. So we have something. At least uh, an abstraction layer <coughs> in the UI for the user for now, uh, which does make me very happy. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's come back to Discord and answer some questions for now. Uh, any questions? You can unmute or you can ask or you can type or whatever you want. A proof of concept process supervisor for Beehive starting with Ronit will have six S6RC. Yes, yes, we are planning on having S6RC. Uh, the goal is going to be that you can do like Super V init dash run it or Super V init dash S6 and it will uh, integrate the other init system into FreeBSD's this init system. And the reason why we are kind of doing this at the moment is because um, this run it thing, SV thing, what is it for? Like VM, but kind of more. No, no. So the problem is that in FreeBSD, using the base tools, there is no way to supervise a process and do things based on its exit code. That's kind of the problem. So we have something like the daemon command. You know, like you can do daemon run this Node.js program or this Go binary. And it will run it in a supervised manner. For example, you can tell daemon that, hey, if, if the process crashes, restart it automatically, which is something that we do, for example, in Gitia, when you do when you install Gitia or Git, depending on your pronunciation. Um, but in case of BI, you also want to know what you want to do based on the exit code because in in beehive there are exit codes 
And some of the exit codes mean different things. So for example, uh, let's have a look at the finish script. So for example, if it's zero, it means that the uh, guest request, requested a reboot. If the exit code is one, then the guest requested a power off. If the exit code is two, it means it's a halt. <coughs> so, you know, it just got halted. If it's three, then um, the, 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 then it's a, it's, it's, it's a triple halt, which means that the VM's memory has an issue. This is something that can happen if you have a very bad operating system like OS2, for example. And it means, you know, there's a memory corruption. We want to destroy the VM and, you know, just shut it down, basically. Um, but in our case, what we do is if, if, the, um, if the user requested to shut down, if the user requested to shut down the VM, uh, either from inside or from outside, so if it's a power off or a hold, then the service will stop to continue. However, if it got faulted or rebooted, then the service will continue to continue, which means that as soon as the BI process is down, it will start again, basically, uh, which gives us the ability to have a supervised visual machine. As far as I know, uh, and Andrew, you can... Uh, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but these kind of issues are fixed or are, are not a problem in Illumos, right? Like uh, in Illumos, if, if the guest crashes, the host will start it automatically uh, inside the zone. But I, I might be wrong. I haven't checked what th these kind of things in there yet. But uh, yeah, uh, we do have Illumos folks here to bring us their knowledge as well. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think we're auto restarting on a failure usually. Oh really? But, um, yeah, this this will be an, an improvement of what we, what we generally do. The big thing that we bring that we're doing is we've got um, where we've kind of just got a simplified interface for controlling it. Oh. And that's using the same. Basically, we can control this for the same commands that we control um, zones, which is our equivalent of jails. Yeah. So if a that VM kind of crashes, it doesn't restart automatically? No, I don't believe it does. Okay. But uh, since you have something cool such as S S SMF, you can configure that in SMF, I assume? The way the service for um, Beehive works, since it is it, the... The, the SMF service for it is basically just running the, the startup things. Uh -huh. So it's not actually individually monitoring each uh, Beehive VM. Okay. Um, I've been thinking about maybe working on coming up with some way to manage doing it as a SMF instance per VM, mm -hmm. because there's some other things I think I would address, mm -hmm. but that would also address the same problems. Okay. So Michael, to answer your question in the down yes. terminal, I'm gonna do cu-l for dev and MDM rod. Com one B, which should give us a UEFI yep. shell because this is an empty VM. And here I'm going to do a okay. restart. Yes, and, sir. Uh, there you go. It just restarts. Okay, cool. Restarting is not an issue anymore. Congratulations. Excellent. What branch are you on? And can you give a, a URL to the nice audience here? Let's see if we. Okay, so these are the new changes. Great. Let's just do a git add. Uh, Git commit. It boots. <laughs> Is that still work in project branch? Right. Work in something or other? Work in progress branch, yes. And I think this there branch is now better than the old one. So um, 
I am gonna merge. I am gonna merge. I think it's time to do a PR in here and actually merge this. Um, so merge into main from oh, here. That's cool. Yes, new pull request. Uh huh. Create pull request. And then here we can do. How can I squash and merge? Or do we want to keep the history? No, there is nothing interesting in the history. So we can do a squash commit. Okay. Okay. Um, has been split into tiny files. Uh, reboot works. Needs more <clears throat> testing for the following options. Options, which is dash D, dash I, dash I, as well as dash B for the networking. Okay. And the reboot is working, which makes me very happy. Okay. That right, makes me very happy. Okay. Um, so, let me know when you push that bad boy. Okay. And there you go. Now it's into the master branch. Ooh. Okay. Get status. Get full. Clarify what I was as said before. Um, reboot does whether it's requested from the test or a request of the command line for us, and both actually do. Those work correctly. Wow. It's just on a crash, they don't do reboot. Oh, on a crash, you do not reboot. Okay. Yeah, so if you request to reboot, that works properly. That's in Omni OS, am I correct? Yes. Okay, so like uh, I, Smart OS might do it differently. Other, um, I can't say for sure, but I assume that all of the Illumos derived ones will handle it that way. Okay. I, I think that comes from upstream. Okay, got it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, nice. Okay, so um, let's continue. Let's add the console command. That's going to be very helpful. Um, in the commands, we're locking the we're lacking the console command. Let's also add that. I want to have super v console. Great. Okay, and here we're going to need to have. In SH, we need to do um, a console in it. Okay. Here we need to do so. Let's say uh, printf. Uh, actually, before doing printf, let's make sure that the console device exists. So it will need to be. Um, now we need the man page for test. And uh, what kind of a file is the console file? Can anyone, does anyone know? An MDM rod com one one B is a C device. So that's a character device. So that's a dash C. Okay. F oh, for the test? Yes, dash C. Yes. Um, dash C something i have no idea so it's in here so it means i might need to do a shift i don't remember i need to check in the create yes i need to do a shift uh, sh let's do a shift then let's do eval or the c equals whatever this monstrosity is Yeah, you know what? I, I might not even need that at this point. So uh, let me see what would be the best way to do that. So why am I doing this in here? This is not a, this is not a good idea. If org C equals help, what? Oh, okay. Now I see what I'm doing in there. Okay, no, we don't need that here. Let's do set F S H. Um, so we need the VM name, VM name equals whatever the first argument is. And then we need to do if the VM name is empty, if the VM name is empty, 
let's do it this way. Um, Z. Okay, I think I'm doing it correctly. Let's go. Uh, just help usage. Or maybe we can also have help console at this point. That that that's good. Yeah, help console. Otherwise, that's the VM name. Okay. Now we need to check for the VM's device, which is this. This needs to be changed to VM VM name. Okay. I guess we're good. Then else B. Okay, we don't have a help console. We also need that inside of help. We have help in it, help usage, help create. Now we also need help console. Um where we do exit uh Zero. Here we do um, cat EOF this way EOF, and it needs to be something like this. As far as I can tell, name the console does require a vm name always yep okay that's correct okay that's good if the device exists then cu dash l the device okay Let's also do, oopsie, let's do printf Okay, I of course forgot, uh, oopsie, redo that, keep this here, and um, Okay. Okay. Which colors I use where, which makes me very sad. <clears throat> nope, sorry about the snorts. Um, Entrenade, check the chat when you have a chance, but do what you first get this code in there. I need a VI pedal for escape and a mute pedal, but then I'd be out of USB. So never mind.
Maybe we'll do it this way. Okay. So, uh, this VM name running. Yeah, that's the one that I want in here. Okay. I hope I hope this code is correct. I'm not even sure that the code is correct, but let's let's try. Uh, super V uh, status. Okay. Who is running? None of them are running. So I can really normally down oh in both of them are running okay so i can do pawn so rod console init not found really here you go oh of course my bad i forgot to source it when no init is here oh console is not i'm sorry my bad okay so here we can also do uh console Okay, let's try that again. Okay. Super V cons, but uh, you are supposed to use the local library, my friend. Why are you not using the local library? If lib super V core, oh, of course, because it's not named core anymore. Let's change it to whatever the base is. There you go. Okay. Again. Okay. Connecting to rod. Okay. Dude blah 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 to exit the console okay there is a space missing in there uh, an enter sorry missing in there um what's it called the uh, console okay that way connected then i can do tilde tilde dot disconnected okay i like this uh let's do it again console okay then we do Ooh. oh nice yes and maybe no uh, was it two tildes to not drop your ssh so session two tildes is for the ssh yes the first tilde dot yeah. would be ssh the second tilde tilde dot that would be for yeah um okay yeah w although will double tilde work for either such that no one... no if you do double oh, tilde great. it will just thank like... you unix so in this case if i do like tilde 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 it will just print in tilde <laughs> yeah okay Cool. So if I you may want to mention that the the name like a rod. what do you mean connected that's not even possible there is no device named what wait a second oh the cu command doesn't care if no wait a second i'm doing something wrong in here Apparently it's twelve o'clock. Okay, thank you, my It's twelve. Calls. Who's doing that? <laughs> what time zone? <laughs> Wait, what? Dash C Dev NMDM V R V D D. Whatever that is. Let's say com one B. And then echo foo. What? 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 Uh, what the hell did I just miss? How? 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 Oh, it automatically creates a device with a CU command. I had no idea. Wait, what? Man, CU. Did I miss something? I'm not sure. I might have. How did the raw DDDD got created? So oh, well, it does lots of auto creating just by nature. So you ask for it, you get it. <laughs> A process asked for that NMDM device and it 
Oh, they God. gave it to you. You could probably okay. do it all day. Okay. I'm dumb. I'm sorry. I'm dumb. You're not dumb. No how, one's dumb, man. How, You're how can I, my cat. How can I check if a device exists? Oh, without, without creating it. Creating it? Yes. Ooh, there is a great yawn question. Oh, that is <laughs> sick. Oh, ew. Um, ew. Okay. So maybe I should make sure that the VM is running instead of the... Okay, how do I make sure that the VM is running? No, I can't even technically check for the... Because you can have a stale device and exactly. dev VMM. So yeah, exactly. ew, gosh. Oh, there are fireworks. Ew. At the other side of the balcony. Oh, God. Why is there fireworks? Maybe someone's getting... Invasion, okay. whatever, so, you know. Yeah, welcome to the Middle East, right? Okay, so... Um, uh oh god oh god this is gonna be a very interesting problem to solve oh i have an idea let's check at our friends lovely uh well VMB we're process supervising for these reasons that's the entire rison detra of this right what there is no vmb hive source code on my machine what the hell did i do So, Antrenik, while you're doing that, I find that I'm missing, um, what am I missing? Uh, scrolling up, super V dash CMD, user local lib super V is missing. Did you, uh, is you, that now a separate you, file that you, didn't get added or you, what? Did you do make install after git pull? Uh, let's see. Are you still using the make installer or not? Yes, yes. And I, I have it in the, okay. like the template that the FreeBSD uses, so we can convert this to a port as fast as possible. I see. Well, let's get it working. Uh, do make install. Yes, that helps. Thank you. And do not run it. I'd read the README, but I've been looking for that for weeks. I'm buddy. sorry. Ah. And do not run it from inside the directory that you cloned, just to be safe, because I'm doing some black magic there that's meant for development only okay so vmb hive let's go to lib uh i need grep console god damn it it's in vm run okay so uh, let's let's go there let's open a new vim let's go to where are we home okay developer freebsd vmb hive let's go to lib lib a VM run. Okay. We need something that is about the console. We have device console. No, not really. That's not the one that we want. Um, not these as well. Not these. Let's just have a look at the CU command. Maybe we can find it. Oh, wait. Do they use the CU command? Does anyone know? Who they? Who oh, they VMB. Uh, VM... I don't think that they. Everyone do. knows that. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay. It's in base. It is in that. Okay. So how does Churchers do the core console? He checks for the VM's existence in dev VMM. Not a good idea, technically. And then for, oh, of course, because he does a sim link of the console. That's why. So he never calls the dev and MDM directly, but rather some random path where the VM is, slash console. Yeah. And when you have like, you know, root Michael uh, console, it's not inside of slash dev, so it never gets ever auto created. That's actually a very cool idea. Nice. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, what else do I need to do in here? Um, let's see. Power boot. Power boot. Let's do something, huh? Let's do something. Let's do something interesting. Connect to the MDM. We started an MDM. Com one and com two in VM your guest console. If no port is specified, we use the first one. It's a specified in configuration. Com post two one and the com two. The bootloader always used the NMDM version of the first console listed. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. 
So in our case, we should How can I check that the device is there? Okay, we need to we need to check the NMD unmanned one in this case. A man NMD. And if anyone has any knowledge about this, now is your time to shine, of course. I'll just come back to the question section just to make sure that I did not miss anything. Oh, you don't like the blue? I can't see nothing, man. <laughs> Mold or something. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so let's see what you have there. Oh, Michael, you're doing SV start on the whole on VAR service, not VAR service, the service itself, right? Okay. So there you have like var service beehive, and in this case the VM name. So that that's the one that you need to do. For the blue thing, um, it it works nicely on the Mac OS terminal. I'll, I have to be honest with you. So uh, uh, maybe your colors are not good, but uh, yeah, I I mean you can just set to you know color none or color zero or whatever it was. <laughs> what problem is... are you solving? Um, uh, bringing more people into the community by do using fancy things like Discord and uh, colors. In a like terminal. blue? Like blue. <laughs> blue? Okay. Like blue. How's the then other you need color? the Devantesky Rainbow Console. Oh, oh yeah. Low right. cap. That would be nice. Sheesh. Sheesh tauf, indeed. Okay. Um, uh, let's see what... Did, did I hear tauf? someone... Did I hear someone mention a lolcat shell? Yeah. Yes, you did. <laughs> Sorry, I just got back to my desk. Excellent. Uh, distracted. Where is Michael? What, you want video or something? I don't want to be all alone on video. Oh, no worries. I can join you. I can join you because I'll be thinking for a second instead of typing. So. Uh... so did you see my thing about the missing, like, file like whatever it was oh no i i got the init no we're good it's all gooder good okay. much gooder and it's also now item potent in the tty section so you know you don't have to worry of writing multiple entries inside of tty so that's good um oh that's good yeah um, okay let's try um let's see what else we have in here so what if i i don't so the do i use console like no a console would be the nah it's not an sv command is it no i mean technically you don't need to use the sv command anymore you can just do right, so super v list it's... super v status list oh there you go okay cool yeah, now you can do Super V status. It will bring the status of all the things. Right now, it's just uh, calling SV properly. Yeah, but, that's cool. I see it. Yeah. That's cool. But then we need to start parsing the output of that and making it in the same output that the jailer is using. And uh, the reason for that is then I want to have another command called uh, Dexter. That's not a joke, uh, which you can do, you know, Dexter list, and it will bring all of your jails as well as all of your VMs in a single output. Oh, interesting. Yes. Too cool. Uh, Super V console in the name, I get uh, init uh, not found. Oh, uh, uh, did I push that? Because I just modified it. I'm sorry. Oh, right. You did just modify yes. that. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, let's yep, go yep, yep. back to Super V, git status. Yeah, I just did some changes there. Sorry. So git add, git uh, commit. Actually, you know what? Let's also 
change back to the main branch now that we don't need to do things in here. Let's do and we'll be there a, a super B restart or just SV? Uh, it's you uh, for the restart right now. I'm using Sorry, the SV. Yeah, do so SV restart okay. and the path in var service. So slash var slash what? service. Oh slash, well, yeah. Yeah. I'm in the directory, but okay. Or, or in the directory. Yes. Here we go. So get unable to change to service directory file does not exist. Okay. Slash dot. Okay. No. Okay. Git push. Okay. Yeah, push. Now I can do, and maybe I should maximize my screen here. My apologies for that. Now I can do git um, switch to main. Git pull. Good. Git merge functionic v. Okay. Wait, it's supposed to be. Maybe I should do it the other way around. I I don't know how Git works. I'm sorry. Um, okay, that's correct. Oh yeah, indeed. Okay, no, no, no shit, bro. Okay, so now I do vim, not vim. Just we come here. We modify which files. So let's close that. We have the console. This is correct. Help. Oh, this is the file that needs to be changed. Okay. So we have this one. Head is empty. You will never believe. Okay. Okay, good. And then we have this one. Am I doing it correctly? I'm not sure. I think I am. If anyone knows, please let me know. I still suck and get okay. So now I do. Do I need the head? No, I need the Antronic V work in progress version. So here I do. I delete the head version. I keep the work in progress version, which is the correct one. Okay. So now that's also done. Oh, we also have it in here, huh? Okay, we keep that. Okay. Okay. Add. Okay. This head. Okay, this looks all correct. I like that. I like that. I like that. Get. Oopsie. Get. Get. Commit. Okay. This is good. Get push. Michael, I pushed into the main as well. You can you can pull and have the console subcommand. Okay. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, what do you get? You get, you get timeout. Oh, that's new. I've never got that ever before. That's going to be interesting. Do you want to share your screen, Michael? I don't know if you are talking, but you are muted. I was muted for okay. nasal operations. Okay. Uh, let me push stuff around. Sure, I could do that. Uh, and how's the recording going? It's it complaining oh, now. We've hit two hours, and OBS is working fine. My computer is a <laughs> bit hot, but it's it's all good. <laughs> That's cool. Um, let me push some buttons here. Um, Discord gurus, if I click on stop streaming, will this pop-up window disappear? Because Discord is, uh, sorry, OBS is 
is recording this screen. Um, Sorry, no, the question? recording will keep going. Okay, so let uh, me click on stop streaming. Okay, Michael, now you can share your screen if you want. Let's see. You keep getting the weirdest issues, which makes me very proud. I should just ah. give Jailer to you. You will find every bug that I have in yeah, Jailer in like a yeah. matter of days, you know? I'm a magnet for such things. And when I worked in a bookstore, I could just reach for a book that was at the wrong location. Just Oh, I thought you were going to say like reach for a book and find maybe a wrong fact in it or like a typo oh, like well. the first page I opened, you know? <laughs> Oh boy, I have to allow permission to share my screen. Okay, just one sec. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Discord. Flippy chippy. Okay. Andrew, I mean, we do use Beehive in production, or do you mean on OmniOS? Because I keep thinking that I should just ditch FreeBSD and move to OmniOS. But hey, you know. I might need to relaunch. You might uh, need to relaunch because yeah. of Mac OS permission issues, I assume. Okay. Yeah. Can okay. I do a full screen or just a window? I should do a whatever. You can do oh. whatever you want. Well, you no, you tell me if I can do it. <laughs> um, oh, screens. There we go. Oh, here we go. See what happens. Oh, boy. Yeah, Satesh, yesterday someone... Uh, okay, watch a stream. Yesterday, someone did that work? Yes, oh, it did. Right. Yesterday, someone asked me, yeah. "What do you think of uh, Illumos?" And I'm like, "I think it's the Unix that was successful. You know, like it just kind of got things right somehow." And uh, we still have a lot to learn. Oh, it booted whatever that you were booting, my friend. Yeah, it's just free BSD VM image. Nice. So if I do a a restart here. Hello, Warner. Long time yeah, no see. What you mean by successful? <laughs> One could pick over the bones of that all day. I posted a thing in the lobby about kind of the how it happened, and it did do a lot of things right. In you know, it depends on what measure of success <clears throat> you you have here. Yeah, I mean, if you um, ask the YouTube community, they will say that you know Linux is very much successful. Oh, yeah. McDonald's is successful. McDonald's, yeah. Kim Kardashian is very famous Armenian, so. <laughs> so and we've, we've pulled a lot of stuff in from Illumos and the FreeBSD over the years. We pulled from a lot of places, so. Yeah, the other way, too. I mean, the they, only reason why they got open source is because of the BSDs. Like, there's a talk about how much things that they brought from... The, all of the BSDs because some random contractor didn't want their code to be open source when they wrote it for Solaris back in the day, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I, I used to work with uh, Glenn Weinberg and Bev Crer who got the... who were instrumental in getting uh, open Solaris out the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and uh chatted with them a lot about philosophy and such when we all worked together at cisco a few years later but yeah it was uh <clears throat> it was an interesting uh it was an interesting thing and once oracle bottomed that was all dead you know the open solaris has like two or three people doing support for it and that there's no new development and one of them i go to lunch with occasionally it's kind of crazy. Oh, for the, really sad. for the new people joining, I do have to remind that this meeting is being recorded. At least Zoom tells you that. How am I even supposed to do that here, you know? Yeah, I don't see I don't see an indication in Zoom that yeah. tells me that it's recording. Yeah, so, yeah. In, in here, I'm, I'm doing it locally because Discord doesn't have recording apparently, so I'm doing the OBS. Ah, okay. Yeah, you, need to, you definitely need to disclose that to people. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I can't I stay long. I just I just popped in to see who all was here and say hi. So we're um, we're we're writing a uh, Beehive front end with uh, Runit, the init system uh, that boots from 
uh, ETCTTYs in order to have a supervised beehive process. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe from here we'll learn what is the daemon command missing. As far as we can tell right now, it's missing something like what to do based on the exit code, you know, something like that. And uh, learn what, what features the daemon command is missing and then bring those features into base, specifically into the daemon command. That sounds good, but <clears throat> so anyway, I have, I have some errands to run. I just wanted to pop in and see what this was and say hi. Good so, to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah, good, luck with, good luck with all of this. And um, Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Take care. Bye. So, Michael, in your case. Dude, you're endorsing smoking. Jeez. Oh, sorry. I forgot that I'm. Um... And we have some people here who are trying to quit, quit smoking right now. So that's also a good idea. I'm to trying to learn. Um... <laughs> I can teach you smoking if you want. I'm kind of good at it since I Excellent. smoke like a pack a day. So, Jeez, man. Okay. So I've not, I've had restart work like once. Of course, when Jan was on the call during CCC. And yes. That was it. Yes. So, okay. So we, we, we have a problem here that you're doing restart, but it's not restarting the process, right? Um, Correct. So I'm trying, okay. So <laughs> let's do something interesting. Go to the bottom left terminal. Yes. Okay. So let's start using a uh, D trace to see if the signaling is being done Ooh. properly. Let's do D watch okay. dash X. Uh, I think it's X capital, but I might be wrong. Let's try X capital. Uh, signal. Uh, do enter. Okay, there is no module named uh, signal. Do dash Q capital without anything else. And we'll see all the modules. Uh, Devin wrote us a lot of good modules to work with. And let's see if there is a signal module. Because I remember something like that, but I might be wrong. Yeah, there you go. We want to have a look at proc signal. Yes. Okay. Ooh. So so now, okay, these are all the signals that are happening, right? Who's sending a signal to who? That's your NTPD being very active. See, now you send a uh, sick term, right? And then the sick term also send it to the sick child. You get the idea. So now we want to do SV restart. And the C, what's happening? Okay. Was there? Oh, there you go. It did actually shut it down. It's great about shutdown. Okay. Not and start, but not the two at the same time for a restart. What do you mean this two at the same time? If I run it again, okay, so uh, SV what status? Uh, don't forget SV list. SV, no, no, no. Uh, do do SV SV status. Okay, and give it the VM name because you're in the VAR oh, yeah, service okay. directory. Don't forget oh, that. Yeah. Well, I thought it would do global, although no, I was doing that my, my oh script. no uh, no it doesn't do it global. No, yeah, that's cool. Okay. Down. Now it's down. And so what I meant by happy to stop, happy to start, the restart will typically kick it off, which is nice, but. It won't just do the two of them together with and without a timeout. So I tried like the uh, 20 second wait didn't help. So now it's booted. Now if you do restart, yep. it's not going to work. It'll shut it down. It will shut it down and start it back again. Nope. It doesn't. But if I run it, again. if I run the restart again, it'll ignore the shutdown, wait. ignore the stop and do the start. It's like, well, yeah, but. Oh, so, so you got a timeout. Time oh, yes. Now that's okay. So what you mean is that if oh, you did a restart, if you did, yeah, if you did a restart mm -hmm. once, then you did a restart again. It's not working for some reason. It, it takes the stop from the restart, and later will take the start from the restart, but it won't do them together in any meaningful way. What if you do restart now again? It uh, will start all the time. Okay. Yeah. Just hallelujah. 
and the signal is not being sent by the way did you notice oh really I'm yeah okay do, do, do some oh, enters uh, do some enters just so we can get uh not in there the other one in the in the d watch terminal bottom oh, left. Yeah, okay. okay now let's do a restart again yep okay this one is working okay it did a sick term sick term sick con sick sig alarm etc etc okay so now it's back up no now it's oh so now it's not starting back again okay oh yep. so this is indeed an sv issue not a uh signaling issue my friend it should have started it back but we got a timeout instead why do we get a timeout uh is it a timeout on the start or timeout on the oh i i have some um... i have some things in my mind but i might be wrong let me check now we need some source code so let's go to uh them let's have a look at the run at the finish okay what does the finish do so okay oh yeah uh and then we have the run Okay, can you do yeah. tail uh, slash var run beehive the VM's name, which is whatever it was, do a tab, it might bring it. Just a tab would do. Is it empty? I'm tabbing. I'm tabbing like a fiend. I have tab completions acting weird. I hope the new shell isn't. Okay. Oh, well, a lot of nothing. Okay, do var run not beehive, instead do run a svdir. Okay, what do you have there? Okay, show me, uh, sorry, oh, you're in var run, no, I meant var, var log, I'm so sorry, maybe I said it wrong, apologies. Yeah, no worries. Okay, var log beehive. Okay, what do we have there? Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. choose one of the VMs. <clears throat> now tail the file that's named current. Okay. <laughs> Super helpful. Very helpful. Okay. Uh, it's pretty a much a lot of that. Okay, so keep in mind this is the current, right? Not the historical logs. Do a, a arrow up. Let's see if there is on any other files in there except the current. I'm not sure because I'm, I'm okay. No, it's, uh, so it's, it's, yeah, it's only the current. So the, the all of them will be in into var log run as video. Not beehive, but run as video. Okay. So here we want to check for current. So this is current for run as video, but run as video has been running since the machine has been booted. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, you want to have a tail in here, tail dash F in here. Yep. For current? Yes. We want to see what's happening when you're doing a restart. And you might need another terminal to do the uh, restarting processes. Okay. Yeah. So what was my path? I don't know. What my path var, was, uh... var service. Var service. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, let's go and do restart to that. Okay. So it says that the guest requested power off. Okay. So that'll be a fresh start. Yes. Now. And I also here we go. I also see that I have a bug. It says beehive name instead of the actual name itself. <laughs> Minor bug. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so okay, okay. So okay, this is a yawn issue in one of his finish lines. We can fix this as far as I can tell. Cool. Let me just try to figure out on my own, hopefully. No means can't Not promise cool. though. Interesting.
Oh, I see. Mentre. I see why. I see Mentre. why. Greco. Nya, nya. I know. Say hi to the nice people. Say hi. Say hello. So you've all trained me that the cat's far more fascinating than beehive. Hello, cat. Oh, hello, Vince. No, no. What do you want? So I found a bug. I mean, I'm not even sure if yes. it's called a bug. So here's what's happening. Because it's sending the shutdown no, no. command to the VM, the VM is exiting with exit code 1, which means it requested okay. a power off. Like from the guest oh. perspective, it feels like it requested a power off. So that's why at the next run, it doesn't boot back again. Because it's like, I don't need to start it back again. I don't need to. Exactly. I like it. Yeah, that sounds right. So I should, in this case, <laughs> add an abstraction on top of this called Super V Restart, which will do the proper thing, which is a do sending a stop and then sending a start, as in a down and an up, to make it... Yes. You see what I mean there? Make okay. So. so let's add that. Uh, do I need to share my screen? Are people even interested in seeing a do decoding? I don't know, but let's try. Go for it. Hell yeah. They might learn something. I might learn something. Okay. Here's my screen. For VBSD is like, show me. Okay. So we want to go in here. In, uh... Did you steal it or do I have to stop mine? I know nothing. Uh... Oh. Okay, so here, do we even have a restart? No, we don't. We also need a restart. Um, first of all, I would like to have all of this in like an alphabetical order, just for the sake of it. So let's do copy. Uh, I love Unix. So here's a fun one. Okay, echo this. Then do PR every comma with an enter with an enter great started and then tr every that with a comma okay i love you unix i love you unix okay it loves you too so now we change this uh, let's see change this with that okay so restart is going to be at the R. I'm not good in English. Where is R? A, B, C, D, F, Q, Q, R, S, T, U, V, Q, R, S. So after the L before the S would be restart. Okay. <clears throat> now we need a, uh, let's see, we have, so let's do a super V run for the run commands. That, that might be nice one. Yeah, that might be a nice one. So let's do dash a super v run for the run commands. Here we can have multiple one. We can have a start in it. That what every time I do in it, it feels like a British person saying in it. In it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Start. Yes, start, indeed. In it. And uh, we also need restart in it. Okay. And furry BST has a question. What does the double colon in shell so mean? So that's for Beyond me, question. actually, uh, because I like modular programming, which is something that the C programming language doesn't have, and C++ just got it like last year, and it's not even implemented anywhere, the idea of having a module, then a function. I do that in order to separate things into modules. So I have like the module start, the function in it. For example, here we have the module create the function in it, the module create the function parse, the module create the function create, the module create the function, you get the point, right? It's just a way for me to separate the functions into modules, which will also give you the ability to have things like 
create in it, start in it, stop in it, instead of having like in it start, in it underline, you know, so it's just cleaner code, basically. And only for EBSD supports this, FYI. All of the other shells do not support this for some reason. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Okay, so the start in it, first we do a shift, then we do, I have no idea. Oh, watch stream, there we go. We just did something like this. <clears throat> I think it was in the console, there we go. Okay, so we wanna do a shift, then we wanna do yank this and then print it in here. And then the same goes for all of these, as far as I can tell, but I might be wrong. Hopefully I'm not. Okay. Now we also need the VM name, as far as I can tell. And maybe later we can add like multiple VM names, by the way, so like instead of a single one, we can have multiple ones. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do VM names or VMs names. So like you can do start and stop on multiple ones instead of on a single one. Right. So we'll super... take a look at the RC script. That's kind of what I yeah. think out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's try doing, I'm just going to go with a single one for now. So the start is going to do SV up var service. Um, beehive dash VM name V checklist stop is going to do the same with a down. Okay, and the restart is going to do up and a down. So down. Oh, kitty, kitty. Good. Okay, this should work. It should work. Let's let's test. Maybe I can also sort these, I guess, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, no, not really. I don't need to. But maybe later <clears throat> it might be a good idea. Um, it's called run. So let's do make install. Okay. So let's do super the restart. Actually, let's do super v list. Okay. Super v restart rod. Okay. Super v status. Okay. So. Oh, it did. It did. That's weird. It did the. Uh... Oh, of course, I'm dumb. Okay, <clears throat> this makes it more sense, okay. Okay, so let's do that. If 
it's a tiny bug in the name got fixed this got sorted how did that okay hit commit <clears throat> add restart sub command oops git add hit commit add uh -huh. hit push michael you can pull make install and try doing it again with super v restart this time and oh cool let me come ooh, to ooh, ooh, can't wait let me come to discord disconnect my screen and have a look at your screen oh then i have to like share it okay <clears throat> Ew. Um, uh, device serial is asking so start underscore underscore in it would work yes it does work yes but uh, start column column in it no it doesn't it's a it's a free bsd thing kind of which which each which by the way like the posix standard doesn't force as far as i know that function names can't have columns in their name as far as i know i might be wrong i have to read the documentation again but uh it's just not implemented anywhere else so yeah Okay, so now you want to do super v re, uh, list. Let's start from there. Uh, don't, don't run it inside the super v directory, please, because I do some black magic in there just for development that you don't want to touch. Yeah, super v uh, list. Okay, super v restart. The VM name, basically. C95874. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, that's it. Now it's restarted. Okay. And uh, as soon as it boots, maybe we should also add a dash F flag for like forcefully killing if a VM is stuck. Because I'm sure many people uh, yeah. still run Ooh, Windows. Okay, so. Moment of truth. Indeed, sir. Indeed. Okay. And uh, that's done. Requested power off for what it's worth. That's correct. Yes. Uh, oh, is there a Super V status? Oh, wait, wait a second. You did restart and it still didn't run? Uh, no, correct. It didn't. Oh, that's it interesting. It powered off. And of nice course, because the finish command, the finish command runs after. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. No, that makes no sense whatsoever. So I do a stop, which is, you know, it does a down, and then I do an up, which does which does an up, and when I do an up, it should come back up. Why didn't it? That is very weird. Can you do Can you do the restart again? Just two arrows up. Yeah. Three and boom, I'm guessing it will start, but not okay. properly restart. Okay, so start and have a nice day. Okay, now it's working fine. Okay, do the restart command again. Oh, damn. Because I requested, oh. I hate race conditions because I requested up, but after my request, wait a second, what? It got back up or did you run? No, that's running? me okay. pushing buttons just to be okay. ready for yeah. your new coach drop, baby. Yeah, but, but after I requested up, the finish script has been executed, which did down. Oh, okay. I have an idea. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This is going to be fun. Now I'm modifying the finish script. So let's see if you do make it install, will it figure out that, you know. So let's let's see if this is going to work. I, I have no idea, but maybe it does. Maybe it does. Let me also share my screen. 
Okay. Will that kick me out, or do I have to push some buttons? I think Discord doesn't do that, as far as I know. Yeah, there you I'll go. Push. There are two screens being shared at the same oh, time. You. Yeah. Okay. So if dash f dear. Quick survey: Do people actually w watch this kind of content when posted on the interwebs? I mean, a multi-hour oh, meeting. Honestly. What's that? Definitely, actually, if it's something that I'm I, I'm genuinely interested in, I've I've watched some of the old Beehive meetings posted up. I've I've watched. Yeah, it's it's something that's pretty consistent for me, at least. I don't know about everybody else. All righty then. Uh, when it's when it's live, I'm uh, usually like, yeah, I'm present and I'm watching it. If it's uh, not live, it's just uploaded. Then I usually like jump around and in in in, um, in the time frames when there's something that I find interesting or if I want to solve uh, like a problem or want want to learn from it. So like if if it's not live, I prefer more of a cut down guide kind of things but but i also check out like longer ones just like jump around to see where it's something that i can learn from or something that i'm interested in yeah if you want to take a moment in post-production it's worth sticking like like a tag you know j just bookmarking each section where where like a major thing came up and, and the conversation shifted there but honestly oh, like have a volunteer <laughs> Most people will just search through it anyway. I mean, that's YouTube for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I have time to like slam a head and tail on it and upload it. Um, Antonik thought, oh, I'll just run through and index all this. And he's like, oh, life. Um, so have the, the transcriptions been good? And do they have like te auto text transcriptions? I have not checked on any of the previous videos. I just played them. I didn't have a uh, closed caption on. Well, let's go take a look. <laughs> well, it's a good time to drop a link for it because I, for example, have no idea where I would find it. Okay, yeah, my bad. Um... No, I just m m mean it as well that, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good time Wait. to self-promo. Wait. Oh my! Oh, thank you, Discord. I put in at call for testing, which puts in at Michael Dexter, which is my alias on Discord. <laughs> because yeah, really. But if you have if you have an HTTP in front of it, it might be smart. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I you're yeah you're right, but still. Uh oh, I pushed a button and else. Uh oh, uh, hold on. Yikes! Let's try that. That's too funny. Oh. Ah. That's f didn't see that coming. Okay, that may have worked. Okay. Deep breath. Um reaches over to that computer and pushes buttons video link and okay cc um i wonder how it's going to do on technical terms <laughs> And the video is blurry. What's up with that? Oh my gosh. Uh, my okay. video or what? No, my playing a recent Go. Jails OCI call in YouTube studio thing. Yeah, okay. Michael? Yep. Oh, oh, get pushed. Ooh, look at there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So it pushed. Let's come back to your screen, my friend. Uh, I, I stopped. 
Uh, okay, controls. Where'd you go? Share your screen. Okay. Oh, Vince is here. Hello, Vince. How yeah, you didn't say either. Hey, uh, how was the traveling season? Hello. I don't know. It's good, I guess. <clears throat> okay. Uh, did you make install? Okay, yes. very good. And it's right there. Please see, the, please see the out of that. Please see the out of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank Perfect. you. Just in case, just in case, you know? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay, okay. well, there's a shutdown. Wait. Yeah, it, we might be good. Wait, not yet. I know. But, yeah. Yep. Okay, hey, that's. Let's do that's one more. Progress. Just in case, let's do one more. Of course. It takes a while for the signal. Apparently. And I bumped down the, okay. the timeout just so we're not staring at it for 10 seconds. Okay, this is also going well. And it's not. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Nicely Ooh, done. He's a smart boy. Okay. So that's good. that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, so restart the show. <laughs> okay, Captain ZFS. Um, I, I like this. I like this. We have list, which is ugly. We have status, which is also ugly. We have restart okay. that's working. Can you do a stop instead of restart? Just a stop. Yep. I'm just showing the audience. Okay. Yep. Stop works and it should stop without restarting. You'd hope. Fingers crossed. Okay. You, you never that know. You never know when things go yeah, wrong. Exactly. Right? So. What about start? And boom. And it starts. Okay. It starts. That's cool. Yay. Computer is doing what it's supposed to do. Hey, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and. Uh, Control C DP. What? What's that cool command for the DP PS? Oh, uh, D, D, no, no, wait. I, I, th I think DTPS3. DP. Do I have it on this machine? Can, oh, not on the B link. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, do PKG. D, do, do, do a search of PS3. It's a variant of PS3. Is it DTPS3? Oh, it is DTPS3. Oh, yes, it okay. is. You just have to like remember it. <laughs> DT... DT P yeah, this is like mean. <laughs> but you're, yes. you're doing you're doing a G by the way. Oh, there's a G. I'm I'm looking elsewhere. D D T P S three. Okay. Oh, there yeah. you go. Okay. So everyone, this is why we're talking. It's we get oh of course I don't have the machine running, but let's see what happens. Okay. Start and then three and then it's it's working. Beehive. Now. Logging and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Woohoo. Now okay. you just need to get that all wrapped up in unit tests. <laughs> Don't even nice. remind me of that, man. I've been trying to write tests for Jailer for a whole year. It's been a mess. Okay. So they're never easy. Yeah. Fury BSD is asking, what's the new process? So there are two new processes. One of them is Beehive itself, obviously, and the other one, the other one is a supervisor for Beehive, which is called Run SV. So yeah, you're actually brute forcing the test just to see what's happening. Yay! Okay. Cool. Did you add, oh, VNC is on the wish list, eh? Uh, I don't know. Is it an issue? Like a. Uh, is it a, well, is there a Super V VNC? Uh, let's, something? let's. For a Windows machine? We can, we can, we can implement that. No worries. Uh, yeah, you do have it in, in here. Okay. So let's clean up some Git well, issues. Well, and we're at how many? Okay. We're at 1 p.m. Pacific. Started at 10. Is that plenty, or do y'all want to keep going? We've we've been three hours here. I'm just. I for one, I'm willing to hang hang around as long as you all are. <laughs> I'm just. Gonna... I mean, I'm just kind of coasting through the rest of my work here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky you. 
I have so many things on my to-do list till the end of the year that I just want to kill myself at this point. So, um, okay. So I'm been gonna... a pretty awesome session I've been enjoying. So oh, cool. That's good to hear. I'm just going to do Dawn. Does that sound good enough, Michael? Fathom uh, yes. B has a good test there to run. Details, check this. Done. Okay. Love it. Okay. Maybe we want to do something like this. There we go. Okay. And Entrenig? <laughs> yes, sir. We did it without Jan. <laughs> hey, I'm kind of proud about that. A amen. Wow. Okay, uh, so I can close this issue now. That's good. Okay, let's do close. There you go. Yes, but they put close next to a text entry field, and I, I am trained to like just close those instinctively. So I'm constantly closing all the tickets oh. when I just want to close the text field. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. So jailing later, RC script might be a good idea to work on the blue text. Just use the. Or maybe no, I'll just stop, find another dude, color for you. I don't know. I like the colors. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry. I, uh, yeah, CMYK like an old I, DOS box. I, I want the Docker yeah. people to come to FreeBSD and think that we are really mature because we have color terminals. So there you go. That's my that's my only reasoning. Uh, you use that word mature. Um, <laughs> fancy. Uh, I, I have no idea what the fancy. Fancy, sure. I, I, I don't think that term means what you think it means. <laughs> Sorry, my native language uh, here is Arabic, so you know. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, thinking out loud. What else is on that list? I, I even write the other way around, you know. <laughs> oh, really? So all your code is like right to left? Of course. <laughs> no, it, it, no, you're using it in the right sense. I'm just teasing because, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's it's usually the kids that are complaining about the the uh, stuff not being pretty enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm even colorblind, so I don't even care about the colors, to be honest. So, like, it's the last of my concern. Um, okay, uh, where are the issues? What you got? What you got? What is mature in Arabic? That's a good question. The the the, the, the mature word in Arabic. Let me think. Uh, that's for that's for a person, though. I wonder what the dictionary says. That would be a good idea to check. Uh, where is, is there Arabic? Uh, not budget? No, no, absolutely not. No. no. <laughs> That's funny. You might work better with a uh, synonym, something like uh, ancient or old, something that doesn't imply necessarily a person. Yeah. I should check on that. I mean, I should, I, maybe Deeper can provide a better translation right off the bat, but... But to be fair, uh, I, I haven't used Arabic in like a decade, so I'm, 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 I, I'm still able to read and write by my, but my speaking skills have gone down to like zero at this point. I really need to... It's sad. Michael, do you still talk Latvian as you used to? Uh, not as much as I used to living there, but I'm using it pretty often. Didn't you hear me addressing the cat in Latvian? I assume all pets speak Latvian or understand Latvian, rather. <laughs> I mean, the pus, 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 pus is very, you know, global as far as I can tell. Although Turkish people say kiss, 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 instead of pus, 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 pus. They do? Yeah, they, they, yeah, like that. One of That's the pretty little... universal, eh? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh... I am pretty happy of what we got to today. I'll be honest with you. Yes, so sir. For three hours, Chokran. we yeah, have one. For three hours, we got a pretty good uh, state where you like someone can start using, basically. You know. Oh, could you show that list of issues? Yes, sir. So. Uh, um, yeah, just let's look at it as a group and just yeah. add, remove. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go to my screen. Okay, there we it's go. It's not a screen, it's a stream. Uh, My stream, okay. Kids. Um, so here's the issues that we have in here. Uh, support jailing VMs. We'll do that a bit later. There is a very nice way to hack around this. 
which is like we will create an empty jail. It doesn't even have a directory inside of it. You know, there is no FreeBSD tree. And then we can actually drop the, the binary of Beehive inside of it, basically. So there, there is a way to do to, to get that one running without creating a There's whole also version. NLFS dash F. There's also NLFS, okay. that's also an option, yes. So for a file um, now, yeah. after yeah. like my, my, my only worry with the uh, with the, with the um, with this has been uh, so like there is disk zero, right? Which is uh, a disk file. We can do that NLFS yep. mounted. Also, also, we can do it with things like Zvol, as far as I can tell, right? So, like, we can not have cool. amount of Zvol, as far as I can tell. So, we need to just check these kind of things back and forth. Uh, but, but an empty VM is going to be very easy. So, uh, n after that, is going to be pretty complicated. And for the networking, your stream is timing out, and, or it's just for me. I get little dancing blue boxes. I'm sorry, I have no idea. What should I do? I don't know either. <laughs> Oh, that's just connectivity issues between you okay. and there somehow it did. It, it can be. Discord can sometimes be a wonderful platform. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Cool. Okay. Issues. What you got? What's um, the list of issues? We have RC script. You already had did some work in here as far as I yeah, take a look at it. I mean, Jan won't approve of any of it, but at least it's a thing and it did stuff. Uh, echo dollar echo dollar hash echo dollar asterisk this is cool actually oh debugging yes. yeah so everyone if you want to harsh on shell and traditional functional programming it's like dump all your variables you get to see where you're at and then exit and have a nice day so i'll go over this i like the basics already right we just need to wrap around some of the commands in here and so instead of using sv now we can use the uh, super v command in here oh is that the correct way in uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Especially for if that's what's needed for the restart for housekeeping. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, this should be pretty darn quick to hack yeah. apart. I just I needed some test framework. Yeah, maybe maybe this one should be next. So and the reason cool. why I'm saying so we can have the quote unquote ABI stable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, you're, it's a strong use yeah. of that word, but go for it. I mean, I mean it's, it's that's not Language is supposed to mean something. I'm sorry. I'm being that person. <laughs> the API, rather, in this case. Yes, the, the command line API to make it a lot more stable there. Um, change oh, the and index. users assume an RC script, like service yes. stuff. So yes. yeah, I think, and even Jan agrees. So I'm like, dude, yes. can't argue with that. Th this one is going to be fun, since we also have, so for those who don't know, what I'm doing here, actually, let me do it with a terminal. Uh, what I'm doing here is in every um, uh, service directory, right, there is a default conf, which is a Beehive configuration file for the defaults. And then there is the guest specific thing in Beehive conf, which is, you know, memory and CPU. And then we also have a directory called PCI. And inside of it, you can put whatever you want as long as it ends in conf. For example, in this case, we have disk zero.conf. So if you add networking, there's going to be networking.conf inside of PCI with the PCI configuration. So here, Michael, we will just need to add vnc.conf uh, based on the creation flags, and it will just do that for you. Maybe later. Oh, yeah, you split the whole sucker up. I get it. Exactly. So later, I would like to also add um, edit, so super v edit, and it will bring some kind of an interface to edit things, maybe add or remove PCI devices. Um, uh, and... Maybe, okay, interesting, I'll have to think, of, yeah. yeah, like just like vice pseudo kicks in as your editor. <laughs> like, I mean, that could be an option, but no, I don't think that that's a good idea. It should be more like, okay, let's say, let's say uh, super v edit vm0, for example, yeah. add device, whatever, remove device, whatever, you know, and with its options, whatever that they are supposed to be. So that might be a nicer interface than kicking up VI. Oh, a Turing complete shell for it. <laughs> a CLI. <laughs> yeah, there. So okay. That's well, yeah. in my mind. And yeah, so I think the VNC stuff is going to be pretty easy. Uh, what else do we the have? The one trick uh -huh. uh, politically is that there's no VNC client in base, of course. So yes. it's like, well, what will it? At least Tiger and the other one have the same name, if I'm not Pug. mistaken, for better or for worse, they collide. 
Yeah, Tiger VNC and Tight VNC. I think they both are. Named... Tight, that's it. That sounds right. It's like yeah. just VNC viewer. VNC viewer. Nice yeah, yeah, yeah. And and does package uh, do say that they conflict? I think so. I okay. think one kicks the other out. Okay, got it. Yeah, maybe we should I know... fix that in post. Go ahead. I was gonna say I know Tight VNC is pretty widely popular. Yes, I think even I use it. Tight. VNC. No, not sure. But on Mac OS, there is a screen sharing app, which is part of Mac OS. It's not a third party application, uh, which just got modernized. This just got modernized. Like for 22 years, it was the same. And now it just got modernized. You can put in a VNC address if you want in here, like VNC slash slash yep. and the VNC address. Or you can put in a. Um, uh, a, an Apple ID and it will connect to that Apple machine using VNC over the cloud. So you don't even need to be in the same network. So this might be a good one as well for Mac OS. Did people. they add TLS and other encryption? Uh, yeah, yes. yes, yes. It supports all of those things. Oh. And you can like modify the configuration for like which compression to use, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Because that's one complaint about the built in UEFI yes. GFP VNC is like, well, YOLO. <laughs> yeah. So this is pretty okay, I guess. No, don't connect to that machine. It's not even alive. God damn it, Mac OS. Okay. Uh, so that's screen sharing for you. Um, okay, so I'll work on the RC script and the um, VNC next, because the, these seems to be the next ones as far as I can tell. For the color That'd thing, be handy, very user friendly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the color thing, I'll fire XFCE and see what the color differences are, because I remember blue not being readable on XFCE before, because they use the Linux term color instead of using the X term color. There are different standards for color. Maybe I can find a different blue that works better on both Mac OS and uh, Unix uh, environments. So that, that's a good one that I can test. Um, you could have an init contraption that chooses with or without colors but when you set the thing up he, he, he. you can always do uh, uh export color equals no yeah yeah okay yeah that one always works color equals no um so th there's that and uh, yeah i think we're on a good track anyone thinks that we should add any kind of issues in here <laughs> um, world peace oh, S6RC. Even though they're like ridiculously similar, such that man, many of your paths will work just fine, and then maybe others won't. And yikes. So I'm not saying there's an, a length requirement, although I should go like eat something, but, but, but I, um, I can't picture people watching like a eight hour stream you, of consciousness. You've never been on, but Discord. I could be wrong. Yeah. People watch like oh, man. five hour of streams. Yeah. Very easily. There are YouTube videos that are more than 20 hours long. Yeah. They now support that. Wow. And then YouTube is like, congratulations. You're like long you know, uh, long haul expert. I have like three views of my six, three hour call with Jan explaining. Yeah. Uh, what do you go off on? Okay, file uh, descriptors. Folks, I'll be stopping uh, the recording and then we can do our uh, discussions, I guess, uh, together. Um, mm -hmm. For anyone on uh, YouTube, please like and subscribe. Uh, hopefully, this will be uploaded to the uh, call for testing channel. Uh, how do I stop this? I have no idea. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, you just need to stop recording. Stop recording.